Welcome to this second module, which takes a deep dive into the Comprehensive and Progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, or the CPTPP. In this session, we will explore the changes to tariffs that the CPTPP provides to Vietnamese exporters that wish to export to other partner markets. We will also explore the different sets of rules in the CPTPP in order to obtain originating status for Vietnamese products. So let's get started. The objective of this session is to do a deep dive on the tariff preferences and rules of origin under the CPTPP. We will also look at how to identify the tariffs and rules of origin applicable to some of the key products produced by cooperatives in Vietnam. As a reminder, the Comprehensive and Progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership, also known as the CPTPP, provides Vietnam with preferential access to a trading block of over 500 million consumers representing 13.5% of global GDP. The agreement came into force in December 2018 for Australia, Canada, Japan, Mexico, Singapore, and New Zealand, and in January 2019 for Vietnam. Peru, Malaysia, Chile, and Brunei have also ratified the agreement from 2019 to 2023. In July 2023, the UK also joined the agreement. Let us now look at the tariff preferences under the agreement. As soon as the CPTPP entered into force, Vietnamese goods imported into CPTPP members benefited from duty-free treatment. CPTPP members have committed to eliminating import duties on 97% of tariff lines for goods originating in Vietnam. Upon full implementation of the agreement, 100% of tariffs on industrial goods and 95% of all agriculture tariff lines will be duty-free. As you can see in this table, by 2025, Australia, New Zealand, and Singapore will have completely removed all tariffs on products from Vietnam. Canada and Chile will eliminate tariffs on Vietnamese products by 2030. Other partners' average tariffs on Vietnam's exports will become insignificant at less than 1% 2030. It should be noted that there are tariff rate quotas applied by some countries, such as Canada, Japan, Malaysia, and Mexico. Under the quota, exports can enter duty-free. The tariff table reflects the general one, assuming within quota exports. For above quota exports, the MFN rate shall apply. We will now look at the rules of origin under the CPTPP. As a reminder, to benefit from preferential tariffs under an FTA, a product must prove that it is originating from a member party of the FTA. In this context, FTAs often provide rules of origin or the criteria used to determine a product's country of origin. The first rule that we look at is the wholly obtained or produce rule. As the name suggests, these goods should be wholly obtained or produced in the territory of one or more CPTPP parties. Usually, this rule is for agricultural goods and natural resources. One example of a product that with this rule is rice, which is grown and harvested in Vietnam. The second rule is the entirely produced rule which refers to goods produced entirely in the territory of one or more of the parties, exclusively from originating materials. Originating materials are either wholly obtained or produced gore. Originating under the product specific rules, which we will discuss later in this session. One example of an entirely produced item would be confectionery made from Vietnam's sugar and New Zealand's milk. If a product is not wholly obtained or produced, it can still be considered as originating if it has been substantially transformed. This leads us to the next group of rules of origin, which is called substantial transformation rules. We will first look at the change in tariff classification. This rule requires that any non-originating materials must undergo a change in tariff classification in a CPTPP party in the process of being incorporated into the final good. Different products may be subject to different changes in tariff classification rules, which can be applied at different levels of the harmonized system code. Let us consider the change in chapter rule, which applies at HS2. Cucumbers which are classified in chapter 7 are used to make pickled cucumbers which fall under HS200110. The pickled cucumbers therefore satisfy the change in chapter rule. In fact, the CPTPP rule for pickled cucumbers is a change to a good of subheading 20011110 from any other chapter. The change in tariff heading applies at the HS for level. We will go back to the example of confectionery, HS1704, made from sugar, HS1701. 
as you can see, there is a change in the tariff heading. The CPTPP product specific rule for canary is a change to a good of heading 1704 from any other heading. The change in tariff subheading applies at the HS6 level. An example of a product that satisfies this rule would be ground ginger classified as HS091012 which is made from fresh ginger classified under 091011. The regional value content rule requires that originating materials and processes represent a specific proportion of the product's final value. This proportion is expressed as a percentage. Depending on the product specific rules of each good, the regional value content can be calculated using four different methods. The first method is cost value method, which is based on the value of specified non-originating materials. The regional value content is expressed as a percentage of the value of the good minus the value of specified non-originating materials over the value of the good. The second method is the build-down method, which is based on the value of non-originating materials. Here the value content is expressed as a percentage of the value of the good minus the value of non-originating materials over the value of the good. Next, we will look at the build-up method, which uses the value of originating materials. The regional value content is calculated as a percentage of the value of originating materials over value of the good. And finally, there is the net cost method, which is applied to automotive goods only. The calculation is based on the value of all non-originating materials used to produce the final good over net cost. The regional value content is calculated as a percentage of the net cost minus the value of non-originating materials over the net cost. Let us consider the example of chocolate containing more than 70% cacao content by weight. This product is classified under HS 180620. For a $10 box of chocolate, Vietnam uses $3 worth of cocoa originating from Vietnam. $3 worth of milk from Australia, 2.5 worth of sugar from Thailand, non-CPTPP member, and $1.5 for labor administrative costs. Using the build-down method, the regional value content would be calculated as 10 to 2.5 divided by 10 multiplied by 100%. This results in a regional value content of 25%. If we now use milk from France instead of Australia, the regional value content is calculated as 10 3 plus 2.5 divided by 10 multiplied by 100%. This results in a regional value content of 45%. The CPTPP product specific rule required for HS 180620, the regional value content not be less than 50% under the build down method. Therefore, in this case, only the chocolate made using milk from Australia qualifies for preferences under the CPTPP. We also have product-specific rules that allow for a good to have originating status if the non-originating materials undergo a specific manufacturing or production process. For example, for certain aquaculture products, under Chapter 3, smoking of non-originating fresh produce may grant origin. There are other important factors to consider when determining whether your good qualifies as CPTPP originating. These include De Miminis Cumulation Transit and Transshipment Fungible Materials Indirect Materials Packaging Materials Accessories, Spare Parts and Tools we will go through each of these factors in the next slides. First, we will go through the de minimis rule. The de minimis rule allows a certain percentage or value of non-originating materials to be used in the production of a product without affecting its classification as an originating product under the rules of origin. The CPTPP allows for the use of the de minimis rule. To qualify under the de minimis rule, the value of all non-originating materials must not exceed 10% of the value of the good given all other applicable requirements for the products are met. For textile or apparel goods, the total weight of the non-originating materials used in the production of the goods should not exceed 10% of the total weight of the good. The second factor that we will consider is cumulation. The CPTPP allows for the use of originating goods or materials of one or more of the parties in the production of another good in Vietnam to obtain originating status. For example, Vietnam can import milk from New Zealand to produce milk chocolate and count the value of that milk as originating in the calculation of the regional value content. Thirdly, let us look at transit and transshipment. The CPTPP allows a good to retain its originating status despite being transported through a non-party if it meets a range of conditions. During transit and transshipment, 
the good should not undergo any operation other unloading, reloading, separation from a bulk shipment, storing, labeling, or marking, or any other operation necessary to preserve it in good condition or to transport the good. Or the good remains under the control of customs in the non-party's territory. Another factor that we should consider relates to fungible materials. These are materials or goods that cannot be distinguished from one another. Examples include natural gas or grains. In the case of fungible goods, an inventory management system can be used to determine the proportion of originating materials and whether or not the price originating. The use of indirect materials can also impact the determination of origin. Indirect materials are used in the production, testing, inspection, maintenance or operation of equipment associated with the production of a good but are not physically incorporated into the goods, for example, fuel, gloves, safety equipment direct materials often used for production. An indirect material is considered to be originating regardless of where it is produced. Similarly, accessories, spare parts, tools and instructional material are covered for rules of origin consideration if the quantity of accessories is what is customarily supplied with those finished goods and they are not invoiced separately from the goods. The origin of accessories, spare parts, tools and instructional material presented and classified with a good disregarded when determining if a good is wholly obtained or produced or satisfies a process or change in tariff classification requirement and will be considered in assessing a good for the purposes of an RVC rule. One example is that of a mobile phone which comes as package of different parts including the charger, the phone itself and the battery. The CPTP for mobile phone is a regional value content of 30% using the build-up method and 40% using the build-down method. Another consideration relates to packaging materials and containers for retail sale. These are disregarded in determining whether all the non-originating materials used in producing the goods have satisfied applicable process or change in tariff classification requirements set out in the product-specific rule or whether the good is wholly obtained or produced. They are however considered in assessing the value of non-originating materials in a good for the purposes of a regional value content rule. For example, the product-specific rule wine is change in tariff heading. Therefore, in the case of wine bottled in non-originating bottles for retail sale, the bottles would not be considered in assessing the originating status of the wine. Let us now look at some examples of tariffs and rules of origin applied to specific products under the agreement. If a Vietnamese cooperative would like to export mangoes, cashew nuts in shell or coffee that is not roasted to Canada under the CPTPP, these products would enter Canada duty-free provided it fulfills either the wholly obtained or change in chapter. For shelled cashew nuts to benefit from the duty-free treatment, they would need to fulfill the change in tariff subheading rule. The rules are more diverse for pepper. To benefit from zero tariffs when exported to Canada, the product would have to satisfy either the wholly obtained rule, the change in chapter rule or a regional value content of 40 per using the build-down method. This information can be obtained from the Rules of Origin Facilitator database. Under the CPTPP, an importer may claim preferential tariffs based on a certification of origin. A certification of origin can be completed by the importer, the exporter, or the producer. An exporting party may require a certificate of origin for goods exported from its territory to be issued by a competent authority or completed by a moved exporter. A certificate of origin may apply to a single shipment of a good into the territory of a party or multiple shipments of identical goods within any period specified in the certification of origin, but not exceeding 12 months. Furthermore, the certificate is valid for one year after the date it was issued or for a longer period as specified by the laws regulations of the importing party. In Vietnam, the Ministry of Industry and Trade issues certificates of origin for exported goods through different channels. It can be issued directly through provincial import and export management divisions or via the Vietnam Chamber of Commerce and Industry and Management Boards of Export Processing Zones. Provide importation does not form part of a series of importations carried out or planned for the purpose of evading compliance with the importing party's laws governing claims for preferential tariff treatment under the CPTPP, a certificate of origin can be waived if the customs value of the importation does not exceed US dollars or the equivalent amount of importing party's currency or any higher amount as the importing party may establish, or 
it is a good for which the importing party has waived the requirement or does not require the importer to present a certification of origin. The producer, exporter, or importer of a good can seek an advance ruling from the importing party on tariff classification, customs valuation, or whether a good is originating under CPTPP before the importation of the good. Advance rulings are binding on the importing customs authority and give greater certainty, in advance of trade taking place, to businesses who wish to know how their product will be treated under CPTPP. Advance rulings have to be issued no later than 150 days after receiving a request. Under CPTPP, an importer, exporter or producer who completes a certificate of origin must maintain documentation relating to the certificate and all records necessary to demonstrate the originating status of the good for a period no less than five years from. The date of importation of the good in the case the certificate is issued by an importer and the date of issuance of the certificate of origin in the case the certificate is issued by an exporter or producer. These records must be stored in any medium that allows for prompt retrieval, including electronic, optical, magnetic or written form per that party's law. Thank you for listening. We hope that you enjoyed the session and that you will join us for the remaining sessions.